Hi everyone, today we're going to be um, debugging using the Erling shell and um, this is on a Windows um, Surface 3, Surface 4 Pro, something like that. Um, but um, you can pretty much do this anywhere where you have Erling. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Erling um, and when you open Erling, you should have the Erling shell or you, if you just type in Erling into like um, the search of your computer, then you should be able to find the Erling. Um, it just says Erling and then it has like a little E as a symbol. But once you click that, you get into the Erling shell, which is this. And from here, what you're going to do is, is that you're going to type out um, the debugger. Bugger and start and the period. The period is very important. Please don't forget the period. And then the monitor pops up. And so this is where you're actually going to be able to do very different things, such as um, implementing breaks and um, looking at your code and that kind of stuff. Now, mindful, be mindful that you're not going to be able to edit your code. With that, you're going to have to probably use like IntelliJ or um, something else similar to that. But in this case, you can actually um, run the program and that kind of stuff. So what we're going to start with is going to, we're going to click on module right here at the top. And we're going to go to interpret. And you're going to actually look for your program. Now, for to look for it, you're actually where mine was located. This is actually very important. You have to make sure that this beam code and the source file are together in the same place. For me, when I wrote the program in um, IntelliJ, they were actually in two different places. But you just have to make sure that they're in the same place. It doesn't really matter where they are as long as they're, they are together. Now, for example, um, mine was because all of my programs, um, when I write them in IntelliJ, they all go to the IDEA projects. And so these are all the test tests that I've done or the test projects that I've done. So um, when I go to test one and then out and then into test and then test one, it's just a bunch of folders. Um, this was where I believe my beam code was. And then um, my source code was actually in, if you go to test one in the projects, it's in source, not in the out. And so the, again, they were in two different places. The source file was in this one, was in SRC. And then the, to, um, the beam, beam code was actually in um, the output and, and then in like a bunch of different little folders. But once you find both of those and then put them in the same place, you're going to want to look for them here um, and it's not there. It's actually way further. Um, oh, whoops. I had a, I had a brain fart right now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be in, for me, it's users. My users, you just skip through all this. Um, just find your project. See, there it is. So, and I left it in the out, test, test one, and then here they are. You're going to click on your source code. And again, if it's not in this, if these are not in the same, you're going to get an error. One of them is going to say, oh, the bin is not there or the source code is not there. So it's not like anything in there. Um, so make sure that they are together. And then once you have that, you're able to go to here and you see it right here, pop in on the left side in the little box. Now from there, you can actually, um, look at it by, if you go to module and it pops up down here in the main, and then you can view it. Now from here, you cannot edit it. Look, I'm actually pressing the keyboard right now, but obviously you can't see it, but maybe you can hear it. Um, there is no way of editing the code. This is strictly just for breaks um, and then to debug it using Erling. So from here, you can actually, if you go down 
If you go up and then you see the break, you can actually implement a line break, a conditional break, a function break, and then you can also enable all, disable all, or delete all. Now, just because you have a break in it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to break the code at that certain point. Um, you could also just have it like um, disabled and then that way you can still run the code and then like um, implement the break later. But um, for this purpose, we're just going to go into what each one means. Um, the line break, obviously it breaks the line at a, or it breaks the code at a certain point or it pauses it. And then you can um, press enter and then like continue on. The conditional break only breaks it if the condition is true. And in which case you would need, I'll get into it a little bit later. And then the obviously, and then the function break is going to. So the function break is going to break it at, or pause the code at like a specific, um, inside of a specific function. So like if there's like a while loop inside of the function and then you want to stop it every, at every kind of interval, then it will actually like stop pause it at that point and then like continue on afterwards if you so choose um so yeah like to this for demonstration like purposes we're going to implement a line break and in which case you would like um click on it and then you can actually set it to inside of obviously the main um file or main code and you would put it at let's just say line and Obviously, since you can see it here, you can see which where it is you actually do want to implement it. So I would put it at line 16. Um, you can do the enable, disable, or delete um, the line break at those point, at that line. So you would press OK. And then you can see this little red dot here. And then that would actually, when you run the code, it will actually pause it right there. And then you can continue on if you press like enter. And um, it would just keep going on inside of the code. Um, but if you do not want it, so if you press break or if you go to the very top to break again, you can disable all, in which case it'll turn it blue so that way it'll, when you run the code, it'll keep going. It won't just stop at that point. And obviously since this is at the end, it's not really going to do very much afterwards. It would just like, um, but if you have, if you're like, if it's like in the middle of the code, then obviously it's going to pause it. And so you can um, delete it, you can enable it again, so that way it's red, or you can delete it, and so it'll actually, oops, delete the, the break, so that way it won't stop it at all. So the best way to delete the break is to not really use the delete all, unless I guess you have like a lot of them. But if you want to delete the, but um the break at that point, you could just go to the break because it'll line them up right here, and then you just go to either disable or delete, and then you can also have a trigger trigger action which is enable, disable, or delete. A really good idea to try to make sure is to go back into the module and check it, and then you see it's gone. Sometimes it doesn't like disappear immediately from the side from the left side. But you can go back into the module, like close it, and then like just redo it again and see if it like di um, disappeared or not. Um, you can go to break, and then you would see that it's like gone from here as well. So that's where it is. Um, as you can see in the conditional break, you can actually set a module it to run through a module, and then the function, and then if the conditions are met, then it's actually going to um, break at that point or pause the code at that point, and then um you can do other things with it as well and then for the final one the function break you can see here you can actually set the function where it's going to break and then for example i put the start function is right here and then if i press ok um it's going to do put the break right there, right in front of the, or right after the start, so where it's implemented at. And so we want to close this, the module, and then we want to run the module. So we would go to, now 
Um, one way to run the code that is in the main is to, or in the monitor, is to go and type in um, C and then open parenthesis main or the name of your, um, what is it called? The name of your uh, file or function. Let me see if I can just like, there you go. Okay, so C and then the name of your module. I don't know why I said function. The name of your module and then the period. The period is very important in Erlang because of the fact that it tells it to stop at that point and that you're done to end to run it. So C dot main or and then that. And in my piece of code um, for my main, I changed it to look like, um, actually I can use the monitor show you I can edit I oh, know main module main view and then here I said um, this is just a simple if statement um, a is equal to 5 B is equal to 6 if um, a is less than B um, then uh, write true if not then write false and in which case a is less than no, A is not less than B. No, it is true. So <laughs> since it's true, it's going to write um, the false statement as opposed to the true statement. And so that is why we hear it get um, for this clause, it evaluates to false. And then that's why it is the way it is. Because this is not a switch, a, um, a case, because this does not say case, then the, the break does not interrupt this particular program and that, that is everything if you would like if you would like any more instructions on anything please feel free to leave me a comment in the um in the comments below or a question in the comments below and i hope you all have a great day Bye.